and I am going off to like explore the ship. We're gonna start at the bottom and just go through each floor, just see what's on each floor and work our way up. So down on deck one forward, uh, there's nothing. There's just the health center is down here, which is right there. And then the tender lobbies where you would get out and go on shore. Like take for instance, right through there, Nassau. That's where we're docked right now. So that's where we'd go to get off and go to Nassau. And the health center is down here. So right now we are headed back up to deck two. So we are forward right now. And this is the starboard side. And this is the handicap access to the Walt Disney Theater right here. And then the rest of this is all staterooms. And then it's a small world nursery and then Ocean Years Club. So I always have a hard time. This is the Ocean Year Club, not the Ocean Years Club. So that's where we're headed to. And I thought that this was interesting because there are staterooms down here. But these I think are all inside staterooms. Actually, it's kind of hard to tell. Can I get out here? Is there a deck? No, I don't think there's a deck because we're on deck two. Oh, there's a pirate ship outside. Look at that. Yeah, I don't know if they have, bal I'm, so, I'm assuming they don't have balconies. I'm assuming that they're just portholes down here for these cabins. But yeah, now we're headed down to Oceaneer Club. There's a lot of different sections of Oceaneer Club and we've been in most of them today, except for the Star Wars one. So we'll have to come back when there's another open house. It's like we met Spider-Man in here in the Worlds of Marvel section. So this is Marvel Superhero Academy. This is Star Wars Cargo Bay. These are all part of Ocean Air Club. Over here to this Alice in Wonderland section. And this is what they call the hub. And this is the kids club for kids ages three through 12. This is the first ship that has a slide that leads you into Ocean Air Club. So here we are in the Ocean Air Club. And when you first walk in and you turn to the right, you come across Fairytale Hall over here, which has three different sections in it. We have a Beauty and the Beast section. We have a Arendelle section. And then we have a Tangled section. And then right across the way is the Walt Disney Imagineering Lab. And then over here is the Ride Studio. And then right behind this door is Mickey and Minnie's Captain's Deck. And then here we are inside Mickey and Minnie Captain's Deck. And this is for toddler aged kids, babies and toddlers. A little slide and some fun interactive pieces too. And some fun mirrors. And then when we come back over to the center here, where we first walked in, so back here at the front entrance of the Oceaneer Club, we start to head down this hallway and we come to the Star Wars Cargo Bay which is a Star Wars themed room with all kinds of different cargo and Star Wars animals or creatures in here and then as we continue down that hallway we end up in the Marvel Superhero Academy which is where you would come to do meet and greets with Spider-Man or Ant-Man or Wasp. But they have other things in here for the kids to do, such as this Avengers mission training game. You can see everybody's waiting to meet Spider-Man right now. And that is the Oceaneer Lab. And then as we make our way a little bit further down the hall, this is the fairy tale hall. And then Mickey and Minnie's captain's deck is behind this little mural here. And then as we get even further, we head into It's a Small World Nursery. And this is for children that are six months to just under three years old. So six to two. And then in order to go into Oceaneer's Club, the same with uh, Mickey and Minnie's over there, but in order to get, go into Oceaneer Club, 
You need to be over three between the ages of three and 12 and potty trained. And then as we get around the corner here, we're headed back to the aft elevator and some more staterooms down here. There should be more staterooms around this hallway here. These are the elevators and the staterooms on the other side over there. All right, so we are headed up to deck three now. All right, so after kind of walking around, so we're on deck three right now, the aft elevator shaft. So there's only two elevator shafts, two elevator groupings on this ship, one forward, one aft. On all the other ships, there's three, forward, midship, and aft. So this particular elevator grouping is the most confusing space on the ship for me. And I wouldn't call it a complaint, but it's taking getting used to is it's a dead end. Like you can see behind me, there's, there's nothing. It's just a mirror here. And this is the, not the back of the ship. The ship goes further back. And it's kind of strange because we're going to head out and we're going to show you guys there's a restaurant over here called 1923. And it's split up in two different sides. There's the Walt Disney side and there's the Roy Disney side. And the elevator shaft is in between the two. So tonight we're eating on the Roy side. So I don't know if it's different on the Walt side or not. So we're gonna look, we'll see if I can look inside of them right now. I think the best visualization of this is kind of in the map here. So you can see 1923 Walt Disney, 1923 Roy Disney. This is the elevator shaft and you can see there are two like hallways here that lead to one center hallway that split the two sides of the restaurant apart. And the two sides of the restaurant are not connected here. And that leads out to the Grand Hall. So now we are headed to the port side, which is the left side of the ship. Heading forward on our left is 1923, the Walt Disney side. And as we get around the corner here, this side is the 1923, the Roy Disney side. I do like this door here. And the stairs are on the other side of this. And I like that there's just a little piece of art. I guess it's not a door, it's just a piece of art, like a kinetic art. So we're coming out of the hallway into the Grand Atrium. And this is where we got on the ship kind of through these doors over here. And I do like the Grand Atrium. It really is fantastic and elegant looking. And we're gonna to try to catch the Kiss Goodnight tonight from down here with Cinderella here as the main bronze statue in the center of the atrium. Lucifer back there and Gus Gus and Jacques underneath her dress. And then as I was saying, so this is the hallway that we just came out of back here. This is the Roy side of 1923 kind of like an animation themed restaurant. And this is the Walt Disney side. I'm just gonna kind of pop inside and have a peek around because I think they're serving lunch in there right now. So they are serving lunch in the Walt Disney side right now. And you can see it's animation theme. We've got different sketches of different characters, concept art of different characters, and physical pieces as well as maquettes. There's Pascal. But you can see Pascal used to have a different look. I do like the the elegance of this area like the, the the wood grain it feels like the 20s in here also the seats look very comfortable yeah different oh man look at how scary beauty and the beast this concept art for it was so there's different animated features around yeah, and this side is much brighter because there's a lot of exterior lighting because you're right on the outside of the ship over here against this wall I like these lights here too. Uh, see, they told me that I can go over to the Roy side too. Heading into the Roy side of 1923. There's nobody eating lunch over here. So we can get a little bit better look at some of the stuff in here. Moana, some of the concept art of Moana. This is cool. I also like the music in here. What else we got? Oh, and Frozen as well. Oh, Frozen 2. Oh yeah, so each room kind of has a theme. So this theme over here is Frozen, and then there's Moana. Let's see if we can go a little bit further back and see if there's another theme back further. And you got Sleeping Beauty here. And then it looks like we got Pinocchio back there. Well, and then as we get even further back, Princess and the Frog. And then Alice in Wonderland. Wow, it's a very large restaurant, isn't it? Oh, and Little Mermaid back here too. Yeah, and then it goes back even further for Little Mermaid. For, oh, look, yeah. I like the logo on the 1923 plates. It's pretty interesting because it's kind of like an animation mood board. The different styles of animation, the different styles of the characters, the different iterations that they went through. I like how every like animal character 
kind of started out scarier looking. In every animation I've ever seen, every animal starts out just a little bit scarier and then kind of softens up by the end of it. This is a great example of how tight the various restaurants are throughout the ship. So like, if somebody was sitting here, this chair would be pulled out a little bit. And then there's basically no room between these tables. It's even worse up in Marceline Market. All right, now we're gonna have to kind of make a little path, like a little circular path around the ship because we're gonna go all the way down to the forward section, then turn around and come back down here to the Grand Atrium uh, by going through, not going through all of the stores, but we're gonna go through and see them because they're not open right now because we are at port. I should also mention that in the atrium there is a stage and we've seen some fantastic acts already on this stage. Uh, there was a little moment when we first came in where they kind of like cr created a magic moment with magic wands and the chandelier up here. We saw a fantastic band on here late at night and then we've seen the princesses up there. All right, so let's make our way. We're headed on the port side of the ship, headed forward. We've got Enchanted Castle Jewels. Well, this is where they sell the Crown of Light diamonds. So the Crown of Light jewelry stores are very common on the Disney ships. Should also mention that there is another set of stairs just off of the Grand Atrium. So there was the Grand Staircase kind of over there. And then there's another set of stairs over here midship where normally there would be elevators on the other ships uh, we got royal regalia here selling this I, this store i thought was interesting because they're selling like bags like you can buy gucci versace and then right here royal regalia still and they're selling this is the watch side where they're selling timepieces and then behind us here in the middle of the ship is the bayou. This is a Princess and the Frog themed bar and entertainment venue. They do have live music here on this little front stage area at nighttime. Full bar. And then as we continue a little bit further, Once Upon a Time is of course a watch shop. You can buy watches in there. And then what's right next to it? Three Wishes. Okay, still seeing a lot of watches. So that's like, what is that? Like three watch stores in a row? Oh, they're all connected. Okay. But they're selling watches in here as well. Some Breitling watches right there. And then as we turn a little bit further forward, this is the lower level of the Walt Disney Theater. And Preludes is here as well. This is where uh, they would sell popcorn and stuff before you go into a show in the Walt Disney Theater. And then I also wanted to point out on this side, this is the, the starboard side, and this is the men's room over here. I feel like I said port earlier. We're on the starboard side heading forward. And now we are at the forward elevators here. So I did want to kind of give you guys a look at what we just walked through. So we came from the aft elevators and then we got 1923, the Grand Hall, and then we went down this side over here. And then we went up to the Walt Disney Theater. And now we're headed back down this side right now. This is the port side or left side entrance of the Walt Disney Theater. Preludes over here where you can get popcorn and stuff before seeing a show. And then we've got Treasures Untold, which is they sell Pandora charms. They've got Lily Pulitzer dresses in there. They've got Vineyard Vines in there. They sell cologne and perfume. They sell Dooney and Burke bags in here as well. And they also have some coach bags over there. And then just next to Treasures Untold is, this one's kind of unmarked on the outside, but if we kind of peek around the corner here, we can see the sign inside of there for Star Wars Hyperspace Lounge. And so kind of give you guys an idea of where we are. We are in midship right now, this is the bayou. And we are headed towards the aft or the back end of the ship. Nice mirrors everywhere. Hello, everybody. And we're coming up to Nightingale's, which is a piano bar. So one thing also that I'm noticing about this ship is that there is not a, like a, 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 a nightclub section. The bars are just, these are like right off the main atrium. So this is a piano bar where you'll hear live piano music. They're not open right now, so that's why I'm not going inside. But also, I 
do love this chandelier it's cool looking so yeah just to give you guys an idea of how like close to the main atrium the grand atrium these bars are this is nightingales right here and one thing i do like is that this area has a lot of seating around it a lot of super cushy seating and usb ports to plug in and then this is where you would enter your slide there's a slide that goes down to oceaneer club right there and that puts us back at 1923 at the walt disney side now we're gonna go upstairs to level where are we at four also i did want to point out there is a glass slipper here in the main atrium or the grand atrium I wonder if there's some like holes here like maybe there's gonna be a speaker or something down here there is an interactive game on the ship that they're still working on. Maybe that could be part of it. Just want to give you guys another look up at the chandelier real quick. It's very nice. All right, yeah, we're heading upstairs. So I'm actually up on level four right now in the main atrium, but I'm going to go up to the forward elevators to make this a little bit less confusing of kind of going back and forth, right? I think that that'll be better. <laughs> This is what I, this is the part that gets confusing about doing walking tours of the ship because I don't want to pass by the same place six or seven times. So hopefully this will make more sense. Now that we are up on deck four, you can see we're here in the forward lobby, the forward elevator lobby. And uh, we are going to go kind of around and show you guys what's going on here. Rather than starting here in the center, we're starting at the front and going to the back, showing off Worlds of Marvel and then coming back. So now, we are going over to the starboard side this is the neverland cinema and you can see they have all kinds of peter pan wooden cutouts here and this is the movie theater right now i think they're playing thor love and thunder in here this is the entrance to the second level of the walt disney theater right here let me try to find a different entrance to the neverland cinema yeah we can go into the neverland cinema i don't know if they're playing anything right now oh there we can Oh, they are. They're playing Thor. Oh no. They're playing Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness right now. What a pretty little theater. So, this wall right here is where the elevators are Walt Disney Theater, Neverland Cinema. This, I believe, is called Luna Libations. Yeah. Luna's Libations. Hello! This is where you can get popcorn and beer and stuff like that for the show. And drinks and candy. Elevators again. And then we head over to this side to the Wonderland Cinema. And I'll show you guys this wall with all of the Alice in Wonderland theming on it. Wonderland Cinema. And like I said, another entrance to the Walt Disney Theater, the upper level. All right, let's see. I think they're playing Thor Love and Thunder in here. That's one thing that's really great about the Disney cruise ships is that they play movies on them. So this is the Wonderland Cinema. And they're, they're, they're included in the cost of the ship, like in the cost of your entry onto the cruise line. Oh. Still playing Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. It's not a very big theater at all. Now, so I know this is where it gets confusing. Okay, here we go. Walt Disney Theater up there. Luna but libations right here. Uh, elevators right behind this wall. Forward elevators at least. And then we are headed towards the back of the ship. Here's Luna. Luna is a really neat venue where they do like if you've ever been on a disney cruise before match your mate is a very popular game that they play and they play that in here this is also where we came on the first day to change our dining reservation times or our dining time so we were originally scheduled for the late dinner and we changed it to the early dinner here and there is a second level and we will head up there because there is more stuff back behind luna on deck five one thing that i like is this kind of like constellation roof up here and you can see there's Wally and Eve and Peter Pan and Tinkerbell and Mufasa and then Jiminy Cricket right there too. And if you guys haven't seen the Luna short, it's a Pixar short. It's awesome. It's a really good short. So these lights right here, a lot of them, kind of like a party over here. There are lots of seating here too. I like this because it's kind of feels more intimate 
because the back wall is kind of right there. Also, there's a good sound, a good tonal quality to this room of just me talking right now. It sounds nice in here. Did also want to point out in Luna, you guys, you guys know me, right? What do we got underneath the bench here? USB plugs. So if you need to charge, and like this is open right now, the doors are open in the middle of the day. If you want a quiet space to come, relaxing, charge your phone, read an ebook inside, have a drink. Like not, the bar's not open. There is a bar here, but it's not open right now. There are other bars open around the ship, but this one's not open right now. You just kind of hang out nice and quiet in here. All right, so now we are back out on the port side, headed aft on the ship, heading backwards. So like I said before, this is an interactive game that is on the ship, but it's not running currently. So hopefully the next time we come, it will be. Here's, oh, they're doing this thing again. I don't know if I'm like setting something off, but yeah. Here's one of the other things that's very confusing about the ship to me, right? So we can see outside. There's a person sitting outside right there. That is a deck. There's a door right here that says crew members only, right? Then right next to it, there's this door and it's not a window door. It just looks like a nondescript door. And if you're seeing this one that says crew members only, you're thinking, I can't go out there. But if you push this button here, it opens up and you're outside. This is the outside deck on deck. What are we on now? I, I can't even remember what deck we're on. Are we on deck four? I think we're on deck four. But yeah, and this on a normal ship would be the running deck. This is where a shuffleboard is and stuff like that. But this deck does not go fully around the ship and there are stairs. So we're actually gonna go take a little break from our tour right now and head up these stairs and kind of go around the front of the ship. Also, there's some like upsy downsies. That was a ramp right there. So this, I don't think this is plausible to be a running deck on this ship. I mean, if you were like a true hardcore runner, you might be able to run up those stairs and down them on the other side. But this is a nice area. Like it's nice and secluded. But now we are on, up on deck five and this is gonna get even more confusing because we're on deck five now. <laughs> huh. There are some nice chairs out here, a nice secluded section of the deck. Ooh, and there's a water fountain and a water bottle fill station out here. This is a first for me on cruise ships. Water fountains and a water bottle fill station out here. And then we can also see the bridge up there too. All right, let's see. There's a tunnel over here and another set of stairs. This is like a choose your own adventure. Also, I feel like our little tour has gone off. There's another little ramp there. Our tour has gone off the rails here because we're on deck five right now and about to go up on deck six on the outside of the ship. Oh, some cold air just blasted out. Or should I go this way? What happens here? Oh, this is a dog walking center. There it is, there's Pluto's corner for you to walk your dog. And I think uh, for anybody to hose it off, I guess. And a trash can to put the little poop, poop bags in. So a service animal relief area. And a sink for you to wash your hands, I guess. And then a door. I don't know where this door goes. It doesn't say crew members only, though. Should I check it? Oh, this is the spa. So this is the census spa area. Yeah, our tour is completely off the rails here. I was trying to do it deck by deck, but we were started over four and we kind of came outside just to kind of explore outside. And then we ended up in the rainforest outside area up here. This is deck five. Perfect example of how this ship is a little bit confusing because there are places that like you end up and it's a dead end sort of like this. But there's also things that you need to be able to get to, like Pluto's Corner if you have a service animal. And there's another set of stairs over here that we're gonna go up right now. And this, these stairs also have kind of a gate on them that could be locked, but isn't. Where are we gonna end up? Wow, what a unique area of the ship. Look at that. Am I allowed out here? 
think this is open right here. Can I just go? This I feel like this is where the like a helicopter would land in an emergency. And there's just like stairs there. Looking down into the rainforest area. Wow. Okay. All right, I'm going to turn around and go back because I just feel like I'm not supposed to be up here. But the door, like the gate wasn't locked and there's signs that say exit and stuff. I don't know. I'm so confused. Looking up at the app, it says that that is the Shipside Promenade. And it, it looks to be a public area, like it has a name. So I'm going to head back up there and have a closer look at some stuff. Interesting. So just to double check, just to make sure, I asked the cast member or crew member if I'm allowed to be up there on the bow of the ship. And they said, yes, you are allowed to go have your very own Titanic moment on the bow of the Disney Wish. So headed back up there now. This area is a public area out on the very bow of the Disney Wish. We can go all the way out. And like I said, we can see down into the census spa. There's the bridge up there. I think these are rooms right here, which seems like a really great view. We'll have to look at the map and see. But yeah, there it is. Nassau right there. Oh, okay. So they have the bell locked. That's what I was concerned. I was thinking maybe somebody will be able to ring this, but you can't, it is locked. And I thought that this was like a commemorative bell. I guess not. Here it is, the forwardmost point that a guest can go on the Disney Wish, right here, looking out over top of Nassau in the Bahamas. Also, here is their infrared camera so they can see at night, and I'm sure some more navigational stuff right here. And then the flag. I think this means that we are at port and not sailing right now. And then looking back at the bridge there, now we are headed back to our regularly scheduled program Headed back down to deck four, I believe is where we left off. Yeah, S slight detour. Back to my unmarked door. Still don't know why this door is unmarked, but it is unmarked. We're back inside deck four, heading towards the aft of the ship. This is where guest services is and your port adventures desk is for you to make any sort of arrangements that you would want to do for your port adventures, like any changes or any adjustments or even book port adventures, you can do those here and then guest services, which is right off of the Grand Hall. And actually, I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna go, yeah, I'm gonna stay in this area because we passed by Luna and we kind of like went into Luna and there's an entrance to Luna on either side and we showed both theaters at the front too. So I'm gonna show you what's in this area on deck four. Giant mosaic of Cinderella here. It says a dream is a wish your heart makes. This is over by guest services right here. And as we are turning past, this is the Wishing Star Cafe. This is a bar. And like I said, we're going to show off everything in this area first. This is where Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique is, where you could come and get dressed up like a princess. Or this one I thought was interesting because if you have somebody that wants to dress up as Captain Mickey here, you can get dressed up as Captain Mickey or exclusive to the Wish right now is Captain Minnie. But it's just for right now. They said that they We'll probably move it over to the other ships in the future. And I think these are exclusive ears that you can only get at Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. And they are open from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. today. And then we have a DVC booth here or DVC table where you can buy DVC. It doesn't look like anybody's working there right now. Once again, lots of USB ports down here. I'm telling you guys, this ship with its USB ports. It knows what people want. So now we are on the other side of the ship. We are, which way is forward? Forward is this way. So we are on the starboard side. Looking back, this is Luna over here. And like I said, we've already been to Luna. Oh, and it looks like they're doing something in here, some karaoke maybe in there. So now we are headed back to the Grand Hall, the Grand Atrium, still on deck four. Lots of Cinderella tapestries. Lady Tremaine and her daughters, Anastasia and Drizella Tremaine. All right, so now we are back on deck four in the atrium here, and we are turning. There is the Cinderella mosaic. This is the Wishing Star Cafe. You deserve to have your wish come true. Jiminy Cricket says that, and there he is, right there. Now we are headed towards the back of the ship, this is the Tangled Salon. This is where you can come get manicures and pedicures 
and get your hair done. Hours today are 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. We're headed towards the aft of the ship and we're actually gonna turn and show the elevators here. This is the elevator stack back here. Oh, a very large opening out to the outside that is very welcoming and like saying, hey, come outside. These are the aft elevators. And I feel like they did kind of, when they went down from three to two elevators, we're kind of like splitting them into thirds rather than like the, the forward elevator would be here on the other ships and then there would be a mid elevator and there would be an aft elevator back here. So, all right, let's see what's over here. This is Hook's Barbary, which is like a men's salon. I wonder if I can get a, a shave here. Well, they do pedicures too. I'm gonna find out if I can get a shave here and maybe we'll get a shave. So Hook's Barbary was right here. We are on the right-hand side of the ship or starboard. And then we are now back at the Wishing Star Cafe and the main atrium over here. Okay, now <laughs> let's go back towards the aft elevator stack. And I think there is a restaurant on this level. Let's look at the map. So back from this inviting set of doors leading you outside. And this is the aft elevator shaft, deck four, and we are headed towards the Worlds of Marvel restaurant. And this one is not open currently, but we will be having dinner here later on this cruise. Wow, I really like the tiles on this wall. And I like these like reliefs here, kind of like bronze reliefs. Let's see what the other one looks like. Oh yeah, Spider-Man, Ant-Man, Captain Marvel, Captain America. And I like that they lit these from the bottom to kind of give these like tiles a different, almost like they're moving. Avengers Quantum Encounter. I'm going to get one of these. These look really cool. It's the Quantum, Quantum Core Sipper. Worlds of Marvel. This is the name of this restaurant right here. I'm excited to eat dinner here later on this cruise. It looks neat. All right, so I just stopped by Hook's Barbary to see if I could stop by and get a shave. He said, yes, you can. Uh, I was looking in the app. I think that it's like $100 to be shaved in there. He was uh, trying to like get me booked right then and there. And I was like, I don't, I don't know if I want to do that. Because he's like, you can come in at 8 a.m. on your day at sea. So I might try if we come back on the, on the Wish. I think I'll try it next time. So now we are headed up to the next level. We're headed up to deck five. We are at the aft elevator shafts. And we are going to go port side, which is our left hand side. We're heading aft, heading towards the back of the ship. And this is where Arendelle is. And we ate at Arendelle the other night. A lot of fun. I liked it. It was a really good show. I really enjoy the look of this restaurant. I liked seeing Olaf in here. But yeah, it is quite a walk back to the restaurant as soon as you get in there. Look at how long this hallway is. There it is. There's the whole family. So I will say, I don't know if there is a way to request table numbers but there are definitely better table numbers for viewing of the show compared to how close you are. Oh, I didn't even notice when we came in here, the designs on the back of the chairs when we were in here before. But if you can get, say this table right here, what table do you think this is? 110 or 604? I don't know if they like move the numbers on 602, any of the tables near the stage. These are the best, best tables to see the show. But like I said, so last night we were over here at this table, right here. And our number was 701, this will be a good idea. See, this is 703 now. So we're table 701 and this says 703. Hmm, interesting. So because we were behind this drink station, we had a pretty bad view of the stage and of the show going on. But they did walk everybody around. Olaf came around, Anna and Elsa came around, and Kristoff came around, and Wandering Oaken came around too, to the table. Kind of stopped for a second and talked with everybody. And I think they, they stay on the wooden path, so there are better tables. So yeah, it is, but the food was phenomenal in here. All right, so there it is, this is Arendelle. I do like that when we're at port, I can just kind of wander around the ship like this. Back on deck five at the aft elevator grouping. And now we're headed over to the starboard side or the right hand side of the ship. And we're near, 
Edge, and Edge is for ages 11 through 14. So as soon as you walk into the Edge, you can see there are a lot of different places for the kids to hang out. Lots of different TVs, lots of different games. I think it'd be pretty fun to play like a gigantic like video game on here or a movie on here. There's a, a bar over here that maybe they could do smoothies on. They've got their playlist set up over there. Xboxes, Playstations, Nintendo Switch, and lots of seating places. And then they've got tables for board games too. From the edge, we're turning in this direction. We're headed towards the front of the ship on the starboard side, the right hand side. And this is where you would come at the end of the cruise or at any point during the cruise to kind of look through your photos that you have taken. This is also where the Shutter's portrait studio is. You can book private like studio time, come in and have family photos taken. This is a gallery where you can kind of look and see all of the different types of photos that you can get and photo frames and portraits they might offer. It looks like they'll follow you around the ship and take photos of you around the ship. That sounds cool. I kind of kind of like this idea, the inaugural sailings photo inside of a book here. And then when we were talking about the Captain Mickey outfit in Bibbidi Bobby Boutique, here is an example photo of what that looks like from the edge. So edge is back there. The elevator pack is back there. This is the Enchanted Sword Cafe, another full bar. And then we are right off of the main atrium here. Also, there's Disney Vacation Club and they have like an entire office back here, an entire dedicated space, as opposed to all the other ships where they just kind of stick them at a table out in the middle of the atrium. This is nice. So if you're buying Disney Vacation Club, you can do it here on the ship. Okay, but before I go out into the main atrium or the grand atrium again, I wanted to turn and head back to the back of the ship because this is Mickey's mainsail right here. This is one of the gift shops. We did a little bit of exploring in here, looking at some of the merchandise last night. A lot of fun stuff going on, a lot of Wish merchandise, Wish specific merchandise, and I like that. And then of course, there's Arendelle again. One thing that I really liked is they have new pirate outfits for the kids. So like, a little bit more intricate. Today is pirate night, so Jackson will be wearing his pirate outfit tonight. And I will be wearing a special outfit myself. Yeah, lots and lots of choices for pirates on this ship. All right, so now that is everything in this area around the aft elevators on deck five. Oh, oh. I think that they ended up here when they said what was her name and they ended up near the statue of Cinderella. So they were telling the story of Cinderella and this wasn't anything that was that was scheduled or anything like that. They just happened to show up here on the stage. This is neat. Let's see if I can find my way around. We're on deck five. Did I say what I said? Some more port adventure desks. We are still headed towards the forward of the ship and we are headed towards the second level of Luna now. Disney Studio. What is Disney Studio? So I found out that the Disney Studio will become a location for a private meet and greet, but uh, the backdrops have not arrived yet, so they're not using it quite yet. So I'm assuming like right now, Moana is meeting at the top of the stairs. Yes. So that's not a very Moana place to meet. Right. So maybe they're gonna move her to a, Mo a Moana backdrop in the Disney Studio. Who knows? Yeah, it's I true. feel like it'll probably maybe be a place for you to meet them, any, any of the characters with a stylized backdrop. Yeah. yeah. Hey, what? question for you. Do you need to charge your phone? Uh, no. Because there's USBs right here. Oh, look at that. Do you love that? <laughs> All right, so we're on the second level of Luna right here. And we can go out there and see what they're doing. You probably didn't know you were coming up, did you? Did someone set you guys up by any chance? Lots and lots of seating up here. They had no idea they were going to be coming up to the stage, everyone. Wow. Surprise! So I think they're, well, well, what are they doing? The Disney it Songbook starring you. So back outside Luna, we are headed forward 
here in the Triton Lounge. I don't know what they're doing here. Are they learning how to draw? What are we doing? We're like cutting stuff out. We're doing crafts in here. There's the Triton Lounge. This is family crafts right now. They're doing some craft work. All right, we are back at the forward elevators now. And if we go even further forward, that is where we get to the census spa. But we're gonna go a little bit past that because we have to go over here and see Peg and Compass. And it is now just open for service, I think. Oh, no more, no more trivia. Hello. Look at seafarers of the world. We've got Monstro here. We've got Ursula over there. This is, this is like a, an angry octopus that maybe you could hang a coat on. Oh, what is this? Where is this coordinates go to? I'm gonna find out. Just looking at the keg and compass and I found more coordinates and I talked to a crew member and they told me that this particular coordinate right here is for the shipyard in Germany that built this ship. And the other one that was on the wall is for Port Canaveral, which is where the ship's home port is. But it's neat, it's kind of like a sailing themed bar. Look, there's Maui up there. Lilo and Stitch over here. You're not the first to pass this way, nor shall you be the last. And there are lots and lots of liquors and beers on tap. Powder Monkey, kind of like a piratey themed beer. Loose Cannon, another piratey themed beer. Oh, lots of stuff on tap, lots and lots of different liquors and things. Oh, there's some sort of like special game that you can play inside of Keg and Compass here with dice. Like this is specific to Keg and Compass. I don't know how to play it though. We'll have to find out. So this is one of the places that cost extra on the ship. Like all the, of course, alcoholic drinks on the ship are extra, but then there is also food here that is extra. So you can get buffalo wings and chicken tenders and potato puffs, German pretzel. Lots and lots of like delicious bar type food. This is actually really interesting. The bar is made up of kind of like luggage storage or like map. These are maps over here, different maps of the world. And then different luggage, maybe like tables and things for map reading or map drawing, wayfinding. Kind of hard to see, but around the windows here, we've got an octopus here. He's holding a Mickey waffle over there. Look at that. And then I asked one of the bartenders about this game here. And they said that if you buy a souvenir beer mug, the bartender will make you play this game. So I don't know how to play because I didn't purchase a souvenir beer mug and she she was very adamant that I had to purchase a souvenir beer mug to play it. I feel like this octopus over here has a Dole Whip over here or some sort of ice cream. Over top of this window here, these octopus are holding a Mickey Premium Bar. Look at that. Back at the forward pack of elevators, still on deck five. Uh, this is the exit of Triton Lounge over here. Off to the right hand side or the starboard side, We've got Senses Fitness. So this is the gym over here, open from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Kind of a lot of people working out in there right now. So uh, I'm not gonna show you guys what's going on in there. A lot of like treadmills. They're doing a course in there right now on how to work out, I guess. Maybe yoga or something like that. And then there was like a whole weight training session section all in the backpack there. Well, one thing that we've heard is that the treadmills in this particular fitness area are facing sideways out the ship. Whereas on the other ships, they're facing forward. So when you're running, when the boat's moving or when the ship is moving, you're facing forward and running with the ship. This one, they're facing sideways and the ship's moving sideways. So you're running forward, but your vision has the water moving this way. So it might be a little bit disorienting. Also another spot where there's a wonderfully inviting door to outside. And this is the, this is the forward of the ship. So this is where we were before, up the stairs there. And then the other set of stairs that leads up to the bow of the ship over there. There are some nice relaxer chairs out here too. Looking over at the Carnival Liberty. All right, now let's go back in here and head across the hall to the Senses Spa. So this is the forward elevator pack on deck five and we're headed over to the port side, which is where the entrance to Senses Spa is. We don't have any spa treatments planned for this trip. Uh, I might see if they have something, maybe tomorrow? We're just looking around a little bit in yeah, the front lobby and we haven't booked somewhere. anything, so I haven't, I don't have any tours of anything. But I can get 
a rainforest room. So I did ask about the rainforest room though, because this rainforest room looks more interesting than all the other rainforest rooms on any of the other ships. It looks awesome. It is $94 per day per person, but you can access it all day long. So now we are headed up to deck six in the area of the forward elevators and staircase. So just looking at the map here for deck six, it is all staterooms. But I did want to head up to these up here, like look at them. Cause we were on the ship's promenade and these, like these were rooms. I thought that they were not guest rooms. They didn't look like guest rooms, but they are interesting cause they have a full window rather than a porthole or a veranda. So I'm gonna head up there and just have a look at the doors, I guess. I don't know, well, let's let's just kind of explore a little bit. It's like an interesting, ooh, these are some inside staterooms up here, but an interesting spot for the rooms. Yeah, these are them. These are the ones that are all the way up to the front of the ship. And when we were out on the promenade, we could look back at these. These rooms looked huge on the map and also the door is very big and i think that these would be accessible rooms you can see they have the 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 spy hole what do you call it what do you call it the peephole down low and up high and there's a different way to get in there's also a doorbell on these so instead of all well, the other rooms don't have doorbells except for up on concierge those have doorbells so at least the suites did on the other ships uh, and the other rooms around them don't have doorbells and their key entry points are up here for you to tap your key to the world or your room key up here as opposed to down low right there. You can tell the accessible rooms by those exact things, the different entry point, the doorbell, and the wider door, the lower peephole, as opposed to just a, another door over here. It's a little bit skinnier, like not as wide of a room. So yeah, the rest of deck six is basically just this, just all rooms in hallways like this. So once again, we've moved up a level. Now we're up on deck seven, same thing all just rooms and then these are interesting back here look at these i think that 7692 7694 9896 would be interesting rooms they are on the aft like the back end of the ship but i kind of like the size of them they're very large and then this one is interesting off by itself here 7689 all right so now we're headed up to deck uh, eight which is where our room is but also Fairy tale fresh laundry in six, six, seven, and eight are all just staterooms. All right, up on deck eight, built the forward elevators. And this is the only laundry area on the ship, but it is packed full of laundry machines. Nice little waiting area over here, and just like a, a sink if you'd like to use it. We've got machines for you to get tied and fabric softener, and then lots and lots of dryers and washers. Oh yeah, there's a ton of them. And then ironing boards, and then folding tables here for you to fold on. So one thing that we heard about this particular voyage that we are on is that there were 250 guests or 250 groups, 250 guests that are doing a double trip, like a back-to-back -back trip. So I, I could understand you wouldn't want to pack for two trips, or maybe you came from Walt Disney World and you're just here and you got to do laundry. So there's, there's a, quite a lot of laundry space here. Kind of interesting, there's a timer, a 15 minute timer on the plug for using the iron. All right, and then the rest of Decade is all staterooms. Now we're headed up to deck nine. Probably my favorite bit of art on the entire ship is him seeing Sleeping Beauty or Aurora and turning his horse around and his horse going, what? Yeah, deck nine is more staterooms, but we are gonna go up to deck 10 because it looks like we're starting to see the concierge suites over here. All right, up on deck 10, and we are headed all the way to the back to have a look at these. These are concierge suites back here, but I don't think they're near. That's the thing is they're nowhere near the concierge lounge or the concierge sun deck. They're all the way opposite. Just kind of walking through deck 10, and there's this random glass door that's locked. You need a key card to get into it. And there's an elevator in here. Where does this go? I am interested. Can I get in there? No, it's locked. What is this? I need more information. And there's Pooh and Hey Hey on the wall. 
It didn't have anything on the map. Let me look in the app. No, there's nothing in the app that says what this is either. This is definitely a guest area because it's like it's finished like a guest area. Is this leading up to the tower suite or something? So if I go up one deck, now we're into the funnel right here. So I think that this might be the entrance to the funnel suite, which is a two-story suite located in the forward funnel of the ship, I think, because it's not listed on any of the maps. But they list that suite on decks 14 and 15 in the app, the Wish Tower suite. Oh, this is interesting. So these are the suites back here. And this is the aft of the ship. This is the Briar Rose Royal suite right here. 10666. Interesting number choice. So these are the concierge. I don't know if these are, these are just concierge suites are there and these are the staterooms. So I didn't realize that the Princess Aurora suite and the Briar Rose suite were at the aft of the ship. Oh, she doesn't get as fancy of a sign. Princess Aurora Royal Suite. They're at the back of the ship. I thought they were at the front of the ship. The royal suites on the back of the ship here are two stories, but the veranda is only on the first story. So the veranda is out back here in the back of this room. And then the upper level is on the same level as Marceline Market, but uh, it, you can't see Marceline Market from there. It just has windows on that level. So we are at the aft elevators on deck 10. We're getting ready to go up to deck 11, which is where it starts to get, like we start to go inside and outside. We're gonna be at Marceline Market as soon as we go up to deck 11. Which, by the way, still one of the best pieces of artwork on the ship. Looks awesome. So here at the elevator pack, we've got a sign for Marceline Market, but you don't go this way. You either go right or left. Just look for the flowers in the ceiling and you know you're going to the right place. And we're starting to see, oh yeah, look, there it is, Marceline Market, right there. I like this random assortment of wall decor here. There's just some stairs here? What's this? That's where the Vibe, the Hideaway, the Hero Zone, the Rose, Paulo and Enchante are up here. But we're still, I'm still trying to get to over here at Marceline Marketplace. It's open from 12 until 3.15. Oh, I like these sinks better than the ones on the other ships at Cabanas. So this is like the equivalent of Cabanas. This is interesting, like the decorations in here. Oh, is this Figaro? Oh yeah, little ducks down here too. And a drum. All right, I actually came all the way back to the aft of the ship and we're, we're going the other way. This is a place called Fresh Fair that has salmon steak and shrimp and sweet potato fries, minted fingerling potatoes, buttered green asparagus, and then they have chilled crab claw. We've got some chilled shrimp and some marinated mussels. And so this is actually a little bit more confusing and a little bit more like kind of confined than I would say that uh, Cabanas is on the other ships. And then over here we've got a section that has desserts. We've got some apple crumble. Some cookies over here. Various pastries here. This section doesn't have a name like the other ones do. Looks very good though. A section over here called the Market Deli. We've got grilled beef strips. Grilled shrimp. Hello. Good, how are you? Chef salad? No, thank you. Salad with falafel. We've got a grilled chicken salad. This is just a house salad. Um, we got some potato and leek soup. Some soda bread and cornbread. And then this is a seafood and chicken gumbo. I like this. There's a section here called the kids counter and it's low so the kids can come through and order stuff. So we got a creamy tomato basil soup. We've got just some fruits and some vegetables, some coleslaw, cottage pie, buttered carrots and green beans or green peas, macaroni and cheese, some chicken tenders and french fries. Another section called Signature Choices. We've got some fried chicken and pork pot stickers. Some fried pork, stir fried bok choy, sesame toasted teriyaki salmon, paratha, jasmine rice, carrot kinpira. We've got various dipping sauces over here. 
plant-based beef Szechuan. So this is not a meat in here, it's a plant-based. We got chicken tikka, tikka masala. We got assorted bread here. Oh, a little charcuterie. I like that, that looks good. Mashed potatoes, some broccoli, with some jus. And then it looks like we've got some grilled chicken breast here. A ribeye steak with some mint jelly that you can add to it. Sauteed green beans, lemon rice pilaf, grilled pork loin, and then they have oregano marinated grilled lamb. That's the grilled lamb right there. And then there is also a full bar in here. You can get beers and liquors and stuff like that. And they also do coffee. You can mobile order, but they have a menu out here on the tables. I wanted to see what everything was. These are all extra charges. But I have grab and go? Cold brew cocktails, that's interesting. And then they have refreshing stuff. Huh. Interesting. Came around to the other side and it looks like it's all the same stuff over here. Oh, I wanted to point out, they do have HP sauce here. So on the port or the left-hand side of the ship, we've got Dory's Forget-Me-Nots. Just a little, just a little gift shop here, which of course, because we are at port is not open. They have to wait till they're out away from port to open it. Get t-shirts and things like that in here. And then on the other side of the ship, which is the starboard side, we've got Joyful Sweets, where you can go inside and get ice cream and gelato, and various other sweets. I do like this. And it's themed to Inside Out. Lots of memories in here and all the characters from Inside Out. And lots and lots of delicious sweets in here. You're gonna be trying some of these more interesting ones later, like some of these chocolate spheres. And then of course, gelato and ice cream over here. And then toppings, lots of different toppings you can put on it. Not a huge selection of pre-packaged items. Really some gummy bears, like gummy type worms, gummy characters they call them. And then these are like little hard candies in here. This thing, you get a hard candy inside of it and a little toy inside of it. And then popcorn and some rock candy too. I was kind of hoping for cookies. And now we're headed out onto the main deck of the ship. We're still on 11. They're watching Rapunzel on the funnel vision. Lots of pools out here. The Aquamouse says it's only a five minute wait, but it looks like it's kind of a long line right now. Oh, there is a pool down there. There's a pool underneath the stage. That's interesting. Look at that. I didn't think there was a pool there, but there is. So there's a bunch of, there's not one large pool. There's a bunch of little pools here. So I don't know what the name of that pool is. I'm guessing the stage pool. And then there's, like Mickey's pool and Daisy's pool and Donald's pool and Goofy's pool and Pluto's pool all down here. Can't wait to ride the Aqua Mouse. We might do that today, we might do it tomorrow. Who knows? But yeah, it looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun. So right now I'm in the adults only section of the pool and this is where you can find the Cove Cafe and the Cove Bar. So yeah, it looks like you can't get to the hero zone from up here. There's a carnival ship right next to us. You have to go down into Marceline Market. Oh wow, look, the Aqua Mouse is like right here. This would be a neat spot. So maybe I'll have Jen, whoa, yeah, maybe I'll have Jen watch from right here when I go down it. Yeah, just inside these windows right here is the Hero Zone. That's where the inflatable obstacle course is. We're on the aft of the ship and we're headed, this is the adults only section and we're headed back to the Cove Bar. So here's another interesting fact is that all of the other ships, the adult section is in between like you have to go through the adult section to get to other parts of the ship, but it seems like this one, you can't go through the adult section. Like there's nothing else that you can get to other than adult areas. Oh, and this is the adults only pool. It's called the Quiet Cove Pool. And this is interesting because it has a glass front where you can look out the aft of the ship, like the back end of the ship. So you can have this view while you're hanging out in the pool pretty neat. And the way that it's supposed to look is if you're at the water's level, it's supposed to be like an infinity pool. Oh, it looks like the Cove Bar itself is not open right now. And then we're headed over here to the Cove Cafe. This is the 
coffee shop. And this is kind of hard to get to. This is, I think the only way you can get to it is by walking the entire way around through the adult section. Because yeah, the aqua mouse is over there. And you can't get through that way. Let's see what the Cove Cafe looks like. The Cove, yeah, Cove Cafe. Oh, I like this. It's kind of like Polynesian Moana themed inside of here. You got Maui's hook, you got a manta ray, you got a paddle, some Moana art. And then of course, full bar and coffee bar back here. And I'm just kind of trying to look at, there's a few people in here, so just kind of get an idea of the theming as we pan around. Kind of like a Polynesian theme, I like it. It's cool looking. Well, this is cool. There's just a, a pool out here that's just for you to sit here and have your feet in. And then the water just kind of like flows down your back and sits on your butt. Seems like it'd be a nice, cool place to relax and have a drink and probably like get some sun. And then there's one more deck up here. Part of the adults only area. So we're up one level right now. Just some nice seating up here. Oh, and this is a smoking section over here in the adults only section. Nice cushy seats too. There's a bar out here where you can get, oh, you can get the Vanderpump Rosé. Look at that. Huh. And then these are new bags. Our bag, we have a bag from the Disney Cruise Line that looks different than this. It was white. And this is like a cooler bag that you can buy and then fill it with beers or waters or whatever you'd like. And these are all of the different kind of beers that they have out here at this particular bar. And then of course, they've got coffee and decaf. And this is a giant thing of half and half some hot chocolate over here, and then sodas. Sodas are included on this cruise, on Disney Cruises. So, fill them up as much as you want. And you can also bring your own cups if you'd like to, or they have cups provided. There's also another bar out here in this area called The Lookout. Full bar and it looks like you can get espresso and stuff like that, cappuccinos, lattes here. They also have the souvenir cups available here as well. And then we head into the food festival where you can get all different kinds of foods here. Like take for instance, right here is the ice cream area. This is Minnie's ice cream. This is Goofy's Grill where you can get hot dogs and hamburgers and chicken tenders. They even have an impossible hamburger here too. Coleslaw, macaroni, salad, and potato salad here as well. This whole area out here is called Mickey and Friends Festival of Foods. There's even a little area over here where you can get barbecue sauces because this section is Mickey's Smokestack Barbecue. Pulled pork, barbecue chicken, sausage, ribs, brisket over here. This might be a confusing way of doing it, but there are more places around the corner this way over here, but we're gonna go inside here first and then come back out and head back to the aft of the ship. The whole reason that I wanted to come in here is because I wanted to head to the front because there are staterooms here and then there's concierge staterooms up here. So I'd like to see if we can notice a difference between the regular staterooms and the concierge staterooms. So far, I'm not seeing anything. On the other ships, there's a complete difference. Like all the, the, the carpet changed, the floor, the wall coverings changed. So we are still in the regular rooms right now, heading towards concierge. Oh, there it was, that was the change. Can you see it? The pink walls versus the blue walls back there. So here we are, we're in concierge now. Interesting. Oh, and different. Are the are the the room numbers different here, or are they not? I think they're the same. This was one of the issues that people had with the Wish, is that the room numbers have a different shape. And so when people would buy magnets for their rooms on the other ships, they would have a magnet that goes around the room number, and now they can't use that magnet on the Wish because the room numbers are different. Okay, no, the room numbers look the same. But yeah, concierge on this deck just changed to pink walls. No other difference in the actual like hallway like you would see on the other ships. Back out here at Mickey and Friends Festival of Foods, making our way back around the deck here. The thing that I did like is that there are sinks out here to wash your hands before eating at the Festival of Foods. This is Daisy's Pizza Pies. You can see him making pizzas over here. Oh, it's just a four cheese pizza. Throwing it in the oven. And then next is Donald's Cantina where they're making tacos and burritos and burrito bowls. All right, came back in over here by Marceline Market. So I am on deck 11 right now and I'm trying to get up to deck 12. 
but the stairs don't go up any higher here. So if we head towards Marceline Market over here on the starboard side, there is this set of stairs over here that are illuminated with some neon blue. And you can see up here, this is the way to deck 12 where the Vibe, the Hideaway, the Hero Zone, the Rose, Paulo, and Enchante are. Just at the top of the stairs here, this is where Vibe is. This is for kids 14 to 17. All right, we're gonna go check out the open house for Vibe. Like a cool Mickey Mouse sculpture in here. Oh, they've got Connect Four over here. Gonzo, I'm already in love with this place. Kermit in London. I like these neons too. All kinds of different games in here. They've got video games. It looks like we've got an Xbox over here and some Playstations. Maybe I know that's an Xbox, isn't it? Is this a PlayStation? These are Playstations. Yeah, so Vibe is 14 to 17. Play Jenga in here. It's actually, this is pretty cool. Like, look at this, like, floor-to-ceiling windows. Hiya, pal. Some, like, kind of fun Instagram-y spots, too. Spoons, I guess. There's a bar here that you could get. I'm sure they have maybe like coffee drinks or sodas or something like that. But super fun like ping pong. I'm wondering if there's a ping pong table somewhere. I think there is. Oh, some vinyls up there. Vinyl, what are they called? Vinylmations? Mickey Mouse Disco. Kind of feels like just like a hangout place. And maybe they would have like parties in here. Bunch of TVs over here too. Like, like dance parties. I think they're having like a Halloween party tonight. I do have to say they have USBs in here, so they're okay in my book. Okay, so I found out that, oh, this section's called the hideaway. Okay, so there's two different sections. Vibe there, and then this section that is the hideaway. And eventually they're gonna have smoothie smoothies here. The kids will be able to pick different ingredients to put into a smoothie, and then the counselors will blend them for it, blend it for them. Oh my gosh, the slide's right here. Look at that. I feel like they're coming any second now. There they go. So looking back at the vibe over there, but this is the hero zone right here. And the hero zone is where we were in the Incredibles inflatable earlier. And now there's like a basketball sports court in here. Some people playing basketball up there. Kind of multi-purpose stuff over here. We've got some foosball, some ping pong down here. There was some air hockey and another foosball up there. It's kind of a large multi-purpose area. So back at the Vibe, and we are heading into this door here, which is right across from the doorway into the Vibe. And this leads to a pack of two ele or four elevators here. But if we were one floor down, there would be four elevators on either side, so a total of eight. So it's only the back two that go up to deck 12 here in the aft of the ship. And through these doors is the Rose and Paulo and Enchante. I feel like this is kind of like a hidden gem. There's only four people in here right now. So we're actually in between services right now for Paulo. So I'm gonna go inside and have a look around. And as you can see by the sign here, it is themed after Cogsworth. So this whole area is themed to Beauty and the Beast. Here's a quick look at the menu. Let's go inside and have a look around. All right, so as soon as you walk in, there is a Looks like a giant wine cooler. Oh my goodness, look. These are specific to the wish. Specific bottles of champagne to the wish. That's amazing. Wow. It's very nice. Oh, and you can see various artistic renderings of Cogsworth. the cheese meats and cheeses hanging in this refrigerator here it's very similar oh I like these lights those are cool it's a very similar layout to Enchante it does seem to be smaller though maybe not I don't know yeah it kind of feels like oh it goes further back this way okay so I'm assuming it's probably about the same size as Enchante and we saw the private room of Enchante earlier and this back here is the private room of Paulo. 
right here. A little bit darker colors compared to Enchante. Oh, I really like the lights. Those are cool. Oh, and this clock on the wall. Oh my goodness gracious. Look at that. It's made up of various pieces of watches and clocks. This is awesome looking. And then there's their own smoking deck for this restaurant as well. I like this a lot. It's very open and warm in here. It's neat. It doesn't remind me of any other Palo on any other ship. As I was leaving, I didn't even notice that the Stadinger was, was also an inauguration bottle specific to the wish. Enchante in French means nice to meet you. Oh. oh. And then I, I slowly we're so walking towards to the entrance to the palace. Similar to Beauty and the Beast. Oh, the entrance <laughs> to the palace. Like oh, here, yeah. over here. oh there's a mirror. The car up there. I like this chandelier. Yeah, it's cool. It's like the inside of a champagne glass. That's pretty neat. And some blue roses too. The thing I wanted to point out is there's this one little like private table back here. He said all the servers are calling it the boudoir. So this is the only restaurant on the ship that has its own private smoking deck so that the guests that are smokers don't have to leave to have a cigarette. They can smoke out here. And then there's only uh, one private room. Which is room. not really related to Beauty and the Beast. They did the same with the Palo One. Mm -hmm. So the private room are a bit disconnected. Okay. So that's why the theme is a bit different. This is more Baroque. Uh, the color has oh. been inspired by the French Baroque, the blue. Oh, okay. And okay. Uh, white and gold, what is for Lumia for the candelabra. I love it. It's, yeah. so, it's so pretty. From the elevator pack on deck 12, we are headed out onto the deck here. And this is, we can have a look at the funnel. I thought this was where the Aqua Mouse entrance was. It's not, it is up there. There are pools out here. There's lots of pools in this area. But right now we are going to walk around the deck and head over to, I think the splash pad area. I was just, just asking one of the lifeguards about Slidosaurus Rex and there's no height limit on this. So on the other slides, on the other cruise ships, this yellow slide is called Mickey Slide. It's only for kids who are between a certain height range. And here, I could slide down this one. Like on the Dream, I couldn't slide on the yellow side, but I could slide down this one. So we've made it over to this side of deck 12. We've got the Toy Story Splash Zone. And then we've got Slidosaurus Rex over there. And then over to my right is Wheezy's Freezy. I'm gonna go over there and check it out because I think I can get a Dole Whip there. Let's go find out. I'm guessing that I can get a Dole Whip here based on this sign that says Dole Whip. And here we are over at Wheezy's Freezy's. I asked to see a menu. He said they don't have one, but they do all kinds of different frozen concoctions, pina coladas, strawberry daiquiris, smoothies of the sort. You can even get some, some nice lemon and orange water here. But they're making me a Dole Whip, but they are whipping it up right here. So it is actually being whipped. So it's not your traditional Dole Whip, like pineapple soft serve. And there it is. That's our Dole Whip right there. It's in like a, it's a plastic kind of like up here so it's a little bit like a little wobbly i love it all right so wheezy's freezy's dole whip non-alcoholic kind of like an icier version of a traditional dole whip still tastes good it's like a pineapple smoothie at this point then i got some whipped cream on top everything's already melting mm. it's like a pineapple smoothie pretty good. I also wanted to mention that this was $7 after the included 18% gratuity. So next to Wheezy's Freezy's, there is a dead end over here to the right. And then I'm going to go to the other side of the Toy Story Splash Zone because there's one more pool that I haven't shown yet. Over here on the port side or left-hand side of the ship, heading forward, there is some restrooms. And right now the Slidosaurus Rex is right behind us. And there's a pool over here called Trixie Falls. So as you can see behind me is a is another pool here. It's like a shallow pool called Trixie Falls. So we're kind of in the Pixar themed area back here with Slide Source Rex, the Toy Story, uh, Toy Story Splash Zone, and then Trixie Falls. There is a lot of seating around the Toy Story Splash Zone. And there's kind of a half level here with some more seating as well. Now we're gonna head inside to the forward elevator pack. And you can kind of see right here this is where we're at on level 12. And so forward here for us is the concierge lounge and there's some suites and some concierge rooms. So 
earlier in this tour, I was talking about the concierge staterooms down here, and they didn't have any sort of special delineation between them and the other rooms on that level. But if we go to the concierge section here, they have a special concierge carpet and the walls are different. You got some wood grain around the doors. It's kind of themed to Tangled. And on the back of this ship is Rapunzel. It's nice, there's mirrors on the walls. It's not as dark as the concierge hallways on some of the other ships. And look, there's Rapunzel and the floating lanterns in the lights up here. So as I was walking around the concierge level, Chris and Rob were gracious enough to let me see their concierge family stateroom with veranda. Look, there's a Rapunzel print behind the bed. And you can see, compared to ours, there's just the slightest bit more room here, right? You can see there's some extra space just past the couch. There's another fold-down bed. It's got the bed that comes out of the ceiling and the couch is a bed. So this room will sleep one, two, three, four, five people. And then the other difference that I'm seeing is my bed or my bed has a little bump out right here that takes up some space in front of our bed. Oh, and we don't have those little, this little storage area here on the end of our closets. Okay, so yeah, just the concierge. Oh, and the, the little, the, the, the softs are a little bit nicer for sure, like a little bit higher quality. Okay, so yeah, it's just the little differences for concierge. Oh, and check out the tangled flooring and then the little tuft there for the vanity. So as I continue down the concierge hallway, we're headed over to where the concierge lounge is. And you can see there's a TV on the wall here that says the hours of the concierge lounge. And then here it is. This is the door that has the concierge lounge in it. And the concierge lounge actually makes this into a dead end hallway because there is a concierge deck too that is at the front of the ship. So now that we've seen the concierge deck here in the forward, which was deck 12, we're gonna go up to deck 13, see the rest of concierge forward. And then I think we've already seen deck 13, which was the hero zone, the cove cafe, the cove bar, and the quiet cove pool, the adults only area, uh, on deck 13 in the aft of the ship. And then all we have left to do is 13, 14 on the front of the ship, the forward of the ship, and then 14 on the aft of the ship. I take that back. After looking at it a little bit more, deck 14 on the aft we've actually been up to already, that's the adults only sun deck. That was part of like, we went upstairs at the quiet cove area, and that's where the sun deck was. So now, all that we have to do is just go up here in the forward to deck 13 and 14 here. Oh, we're almost done touring the entire ship. All right, so now we've made it up to deck 13 forward, and we're just gonna have a look down. There's a couple of suites down. Oh, Jen joined me now. I'm gonna join uh, down at the end of these hallways. There's a couple of suites that I want to see. We can see the doors to them, uh, but this is still concierge here. And one neat thing about this particular concierge hallway is it has doors that lead outside to there, like to the deck area there. So you don't have to go over here to the elevators. Not really like a huge deal breaker or huge deal thing, but like you can just go out the doors there. So somebody just ding dong ditched the suite there. A couple of teenage girls just did it. Yeah, we're headed down to the suite. So down at the end of the hallway is another one of the two-story suites. This is the Briar Rose Royal Suite, number 13500. And then if we go to the left here, that takes us down. It says concierge lounge, but this is the concierge sun deck. This is the way in. And then at the end of this hallway here, we have another suite. This is the Princess Aurora Suite, 13,000. I like that concierge is Tangled theme. A lot of people up on this level seem to have these lighted door magnets. And that leads us back to the forward elevator shaft. And we're gonna go outside. We gotta push the button here to go outside. And this is the smoking deck out here. Or no, that's the smoking deck up there. This is just a regular deck right here. It's not very big. This is the entirety of it right in this area right here. There are some nice plush couches though, like round type seating areas over here. And it's nice. This is where I went to go kind of view how we were getting off at Castaway Key. I do also have to admit though, 
I don't know that I like that you can just see into the royal suite there. It's like they're waving at us. <laughs> it is a really neat view from this area though. Look at how blue the ocean is where we're at. Okay, so up one more level, just right up these stairs here. And there's a, another little sun deck out here with some nice cushy chairs, but this is the smoking deck. You can see there's an ashtray right there. They have some nice, oh no, look, there's already got cigarette burns in it. Oh no. Cause it's the, cause this is the smoking deck. How's it feel? Very comfortable. Nice. And then as we turn around, there is a bar right here. What's the name of this bar? This is Currents. Yeah, looks like it's a full bar. This bar does not have the coffee machine at it like some of the other ones do though. And then if we continue around towards the front of the ship, then we're heading towards the very last pool. This is the very last pool that we haven't seen in this tour. At the forward bow end of the ship, just past the radar domes here. Oh, and there's the horn right there. The Mickey shape. Yeah, it's also very, very loud. <laughs> so this is Chippendale's pool. I like that it's divided, like broken into two sections. There's kind of this little waterfall section. And then there's another section that is a little bit deeper, about three feet deeper. So there's a little waterfall section there. And then there's just like a little deeper section over here where you can do some wading and stuff like that. Uh, it's nice because it's a little bit quieter, a little bit more secluded. There's also a ton of shaded seating up the front here. And then that's it. That's, we are all the way at the front of the ship looking down into the concierge sun deck down there. And then we've got a pretty good view of the horns from up here. And that's it. That's the entire ship. So although when we first got on this ship, I felt like it was kind of confusing after walking the entire, like all of the decks, every space that we could get into, I don't think it's so bad. Like there are some dead ends, but they make sense. If that makes sense. Like there's a reason that there's a dead end there. And I think for the most part, it doesn't really interrupt the flow of things. Unless you're trying to do a full run around the deck, then you're going to have a hard time. Because there is not a deck that goes the full circle that you can run on. There's like stairs in the way and stuff like that. So, I don't know. I do like the ship. I like the layout. I like the look of it. And I can't wait to come back on it. So, we hope that you enjoyed this tour of the Disney Wish. And with that being said, we're off. We'll see you all tomorrow. And now, and now it's time, time to pay, pay the, the price. price.